Hello and welcome to the Importance of Online Branding and Professionalism panel, part of WonderCon 2020 at Home. I'd like to introduce our moderator for the panel, Ron Coleman. Take it away, Ron. Thanks, Sean. Uh, this is kind of a fun way to do a panel, I suppose. We done a lot of these but never quite like this the world's a little different right now but today for the panel we have a bunch of great guests who all are going to bring interesting points of view on these topics uh, we have Topher Davila, Sean Glumas, Gene Turnbow, Dr. Rena Wolsinger and June Beha and then I'm Ron Pullman uh, before we start I think Topher had a little bit to say about the background of the panel and, and what we're doing here today. Thank you. Uh, well, person, well, um, we've been doing the full-time creative work on a part-time schedule at Com at Cineo Comic Cons and Wonder Cons uh, for about 12 years, Comic Con for about 12 years and Wonder Con for about eight years. And we never run out of questions, things to talk about and people have never run out of questions, which shows there's a significant amount of interest for the general topic around simply getting your work done from an organizational management, you know, basically anything but what you're actually talented about. Um, and the bottom line, and we get a lot of these questions that are really interesting because they're interesting on their own, but they are nowhere in on the panel description ever. And they just, but they just keep on over a decade of just been in this sort of grouping of questions that kind of fa fall under professionalism and branding and online branding and as i said what's interesting about those is that they're not in the panel description for the panel people show up for which shows there's a definite grassroots interest for these topics if they are completely un uh, if they're just out of not out of nowhere but they're unfounded or not set up so we are doing a offshoot panel um, because of that interest to focus on the panel's topic. And so we have people that know about that. So this is kind of um, gonna be very useful information that people normally say we think it's gonna be useful. I actually am quite confident it will be useful because we've got a lot of years of people asking about these sort of things repeatedly. Again, when it's not actually what the panel is supposed to be about, they just come, they ask it. So this is where we're at. We'll see how it goes. It's some new territory. Let's have fun. Okay, great. Thanks, uh, Topher. I think where we should start next is everyone should go around and why don't you briefly introduce yourself, say what you do and where you do it, and then maybe give a quick 60 second tip as far as just something that is relevant to branding and putting yourself out there. Uh, Gene, why don't we start with you? Hi, I'm Gene Turnbow. I'm the founder and station manager of Krypton Radio, the world's only full-time geek and pop culture radio station. Uh, I am also, uh, pardon the airplane, I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> uh, I am also uh, the editor-in-chief of a new publishing label called Helium Beach. And uh, the there's radio station sort of gave rise to the publishing thing and uh it happened in an interesting way um we have been doing krypton radio now for uh over 10 years we're coming up on year number 11 actually uh uh in in may actually may may 5th i think may may 10th will be 11 years on the air continuously running to 185 countries. And uh, over that time, we have developed a reputation for um, doing good business. We, uh, we like to help other people rise and uh, we take best advantage of people's talents and abilities. So we have, uh, we have a team of polymaths and you can look that one up. Uh, it means essentially Renaissance people. And I mean that in the truest sense. Um, we cultivate this in the people who work for us. And uh, sometimes they end up, you know, 
going off and working for somebody else or starting their own companies or whatever. Uh, but this is the foundation of what we're doing. Um, as far as as far as a a tip goes, um, I would say that for presenting whatever it is you're doing, it's important to to have a cohesive concept of how you're going to present yourself. Um, don't do it piecemeal. Design your way through it first and figure out exactly which parts you really do need uh, in terms of social media or, or public outreach or how you're going to reach your audience and what parts you don't need so that you're not spending your time building things you're not going to use. Uh, we have learned this one the hard way. Um, and there have been times when I have been tremendously overextended uh, and, and my team has uh, trying to make everything fit and, and go together. And uh, so choose your battles wisely. All right, yeah, that, that's great advice. Um, June, why, why don't you step in next? I, I think you look like you're ready to say something. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Hi, I'm June Bea. I am CEO of Bea Group, a company I started five years ago, and I've been working from home for about 20 years, and my team works from home. So what we do is write grants, provide consulting services for, uh, to schools and districts, and in the last five years, we've actually helped secure over $50 million in grant funding for our clients, and my goal is to implement engaging, fun, and transformative programs for youth. And a lot of that involves uh, entertainment. And we've been doing videos more recently. So a tip I would have is do good work because my work, uh, my reputation is my brand. I believe delivering excellent, high quality products and services is what's made it possible for me to be able to do the work that I do. And another piece is to make my clients jobs easier. So I feel like it's really important in the branding to really keep in mind the quality of the work and to be to have it be something that you're really proud of. So for me, uh, the online presence is important. Having a website you're really proud of, having a logo that speaks to who you are. And so for me, we could show it a little bit later, but I actually have an Easter egg that uh, is an homage to my love for Comic-Con. And so it's important to do good and have fun. Okay, uh, that's excellent. That, uh, words to live by, do good and have fun. I, I think that, that can be the motto for anyone. Uh, how about you, uh, Rena? What, what, uh, same question, just kind of the so, intro question. So thanks, Ron, and hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, Virtual Con 2020. So I'm um, excited to be back on the panel. Thank you, Topher and everybody. Um, it's always really interesting and I love meeting people. I hope even through this venue, we can meet people through our social media. So my brand ended up being really, being really important this year and I didn't know about it. I had, um, my brand is really uh, threefold. It's technology, research, and media. And so I, my brand is about folding the, those three things in together. And I carefully crafted my website, rena.com, R-E-N-A-H.com, um, to represent those three things. And I have all of my publications, as well as digital media projects up there. Um, I had not known that a company was seeking me out. And I didn't know until just about when they hired me and said, hey, we love your website. And so, and I had not uh, done that in, for the purposes of getting hired, but that just happened to be what they did. I was thinking they would be looking more in my LinkedIn, which I also spend a lot of time on perfecting that as well. So, uh, my, so I have my brand, my, I have a music and video label called Renzone. And that's been, we opened in 92 and we produce uh, film and video for um, different, a lot of different clients as well as ourselves. And right now we're producing music for the pandemic. It's really fun. 
um, with uh, people that can either drive by my street or are quarantining with me. There are six of us. Um, and so Red Zone's been around. Um, so that's, that's a little bit about my brand and I take it really seriously. I spend a lot of time on it and um, it's been working all this time. So doing something right. Very cool. Very cool. How about you, Topher? You, you, you have a quick introduction to your, uh, for yourself and uh, a tip for the fine people watching this at home? Um, I'll combine both of them in one. Um, okay. It's uh, a lot of times when people say brand, it has the, 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 the image people get is that it's, 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 it's specific or it's really quick or it's small or it's one thing. And brand, depending on who you are, could actually be a bit more than just one thing. Uh, so for when people ask me what I do, I only half jokingly go, well, it depends on the day of the week because it's what I'm doing is different days of the week. I end up um, primarily, I'm the art director for uh, Geekdom Wear, E-A-R, um, uh, a company that uh, my wife and I run uh, for clothing, but then we're also looking at, but then we also got uh, a new laser cutter that we got. I'm going to be uh, this year, I'm, I'm finally getting to this sort of bag. I'm going to do a Kickstarter for that's special. Um, I, I'm, I'm finally getting to writing that uh, a little bit later and, uh, and a little bit later and some fun stuff off to the side. But um, I started to be working on my bag one day and then regular geek to wear this week. And then my uh, line of shirts that my wife is doing and she's looking to open up a kind of store, kind of a niche store. And it sounds a lot like it's all circling around. It's not connected, but in the end, my brand is product development. Someone asks what I do, it's product development. You tell me what you want made, I can make it for you or I can make it for ourselves. So even though I'm doing what's seemingly a different thing every day, it's actually all one brand of product development. So that's my tip and my description is that your brand can actually be kind of wider reaching in some ways if you're in a position where you're not just an illustrator or just a musician or just that. And Rena also exemplified that too when she had three different things that don't usually go together under one umbrella. So brand can be specific, but brand can also be broad also. It's just got to be what is it that you fill your week with, which could be a couple of different things. And even if there is, they're still going to be under one general category. So for me, that's product development. Okay, thanks. Uh, Sean, did you want to say something here for a moment or, or do you want to step in later? You know, I'll, I'll step in and introduce myself. Sorry, I'm the voice uh, in the sky here. Uh, my webcam is not working and I'm doing a little bit behind the scenes, but my name is Sean Glimmis and I'm an Adobe education leader. And, um, my role here is um, a lot of the branding, all the kind of the hard uh, where the rubber meets the road uh, part of it is, you know, how do we actually create these things? How do we make them happen? And, um, you know, I'm going to come back a little bit later. We're going to talk a little bit more about um, some of the tools that we have on the software side. But this is my site here uh, that I just pulled up and uh, I use Behance for it. So we'll talk a little bit about LinkedIn as well. I've been an educator for a long time. That's kind of my day job. And my other joke that I tell everyone is I am a letter. And at our other panels that we do, I ask everyone in the room, how many of you want to be a, a letter? And I get like one other person that raises their hand. So I get, I get to do the little word bu balloons and comments books with uh, the type in it. So it all kind of intermingles and intermixes. And uh, one thing that I would really like to stress is consistency. Um, and that's something when we come back to the software side, and we'll talk a little bit about that on LinkedIn, uh, I'll show some samples and you'll see there's consistency in everything I do. I use the same headshot. I use the same um, biography. My links are the same. And um, it's an important part of the brand that we, we, we talk about. And a lot of times you may not even know that you're building a brand, but that consistency will help you get there. And um, that's about it from my side. Okay, great. Um, I'll introduce myself. I'm uh, Dr. Ronald Coleman. It sounds weird to say the whole thing, but I've got a PhD in regenerative medicine. And I now work in a biotechnology company in Oceanside, California, working with primary epithelial cells. And those are the 
cells of the, the lungs and upper airways. So obviously with what's going on in the world right now, uh, I'm very, very stupidly busy seven days a week for the last couple months. Um, but that's cool. I'm happy to be working. Uh, my, my tip I would give, I think with, is with things like Facebook. Uh, if you're constantly hammering sales, I think that you're, you're not going to have anyone paying attention to you. I've heard people say it's a 90, 10 thing that you want to have 90% of your content drawing people to you. And then at some point, you know, you say, Hey, and by the way, I have these things to sell, but you know, it, but obviously LinkedIn is a different thing and each platform is going to have its own balance of where you want to do it. But I just personally feel that if you're, if every post that you do is, Hey, buy my book. I don't think people care to listen to you anymore. I mean, that, that's, that's my opinion and my, my tip for the thing. So now I think we can, now that we're all, all been introduced, I think we can move on to the next section of the program. And I think here's where we're, we're going to go a little bit more in depth. So if each person wants to give maybe a two minute individual discussion topic, something that you think is important to talk about, we can kind of learn a little bit before we get to the, the Q and A type part of it. So, uh, Rena, do you want to go first on this round? Just one of your a topic you think is important that you want to talk a little bit about professionalism, or I will, and I'm going to talk about it in terms of teaching because I've also been teaching for a long time um, with Sean in in media, and I want to talk about um, the importance of learning how to get along online. And I've been, I found a successful way to do this with my students who are all adults. I teach college. They're probably between the ages of 20 and 40, I guess. And, and they really didn't sign up to be online and like go online and do lessons and discussion boards. So we don't do things that way. And um, also all day, what's hard for me is I'm an ed tech manager. And so all day I'm online already. And then I get back online for a few more hours at night, a couple times a week. So that's been tiring, but on the other hand, it's been fun. So I, I have a recording studio and I have all the equipment here plus video and lights. And so I teach live. I've learned how to communicate two ways with people online. Um, and so I've learned how to share the screen with other people and have them take over and teach, teach us things. And so that experience of people being in charge of talking and sharing and getting people's undivided attention is very important. Um, I found it to be really powerful in terms of teaching, sharing, and the same whether it's at work or during teaching, that is my one tip is learn how to um, communicate in a different way online and, and uh, offer screen time to other people. And um, also just the other thing I did that was important is I rearranged things so that they're behind my camera so that I can pull up microphones or instruments or keyboards and then share that with uh, my audience. So I had to really kind of rethink on how I'm gonna be communicating. That's, that's what I wanna share. Excellent, excellent. Jean, how about you? What, what is a two minute topic that you think is important for people to understand and for people to know? Well, in regard okay, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think one of the most important things uh, in managing your brand is staying focused on it. Um, and this sounds like uh, um, perhaps an oversimplification of the concept, but you have to know exactly what it is that you're trying to do, who it is you want to be in the marketplace, and the kind of principles or ideas that you want to set forth in whatever it is you're doing. And then trim away everything else. One of the critical things about getting people to pay attention to you is to stay extremely sharply focused on your message. 
no extraneous wiggly bits or dangly bits to draw attention away from what it is you're trying to do or say. So if you are, um, if you are an artist, focus on your art, you know, keep your, keep your politics out of it, keep your taste in music out of it, uh, focus on the art. If you are a musician, then focus on that. But keep your message, keep your message singular and tightly focused because people are distracted by the tiniest things. And one of the reasons for this is that on the whole, your, your audience has the attention span of a gerbil. They will remember, uh, they will remember a complex message for a few seconds simple message for a few minutes and the elements are what stick. So say for example, I have a, uh, uh, I have an art gallery and I'm going to be presenting a particular artist on a particular day and I make the announcement. I have an art gallery. I'm having this person appear in person between the hours of 2 and 4 p.m. At, at the boardwalk on this beach on this given day. And you can get there by bus and here are the nearby restaurants. OK, well, uh, they might remember a little of that. Uh, after a while, they'll remember, oh, this person's going to be at this gallery. But they might not remember, remember the date. and then after a little while longer, they might remember the artist or they might remember your gallery, but maybe not both. It degrades over time. So it's essential that you have your message as tightly focused on what you want to say in the first place. Less is more. All right, thank you. Uh, June, what would you like to say as far as a topic that's important to you and you think is important to branding and this topic in general. Oh, my, you're muted, sorry. Muted, sorry about that. All right, so for me, it's, I feel like it's being clear about what kind of clients you want to attract. So for me, because I'm a grant writer and my intention is to actually be to be at a position where when they get the funding to actually help implement. And so it's more of a long-term relationship that I'm looking for. And so I wanna be really clear with my branding, with my marketing on the kind of clients I want to attract. And I'm also pretty clear with them that when we're first meeting, it might, we, let's actually figure out if it's a good fit. So if it's a good fit for them, do I meet their needs? And are they going to be clients that I wanna continue working with? And I feel like it's really important to, to be clear about that. And I think it's fine as my website or my branding if I actually eliminate people who don't wanna work with me because my message doesn't resonate. So I think it's okay that it, it's, a, it's kind of a gatekeeper, the branding. So for me, it's being really clear. So I'm really clear of what kind of client I want and what, uh, what I would like. So just to be clear with expectations and, and I also feel like it allows me to then be able to maybe charge more than others or because it's about the quality of the product. And so I think it's, if you know you have a high quality product and there's, there's certain clients that are willing to go for it and that's what you're trying to attract, I think it's okay to, to put that out there in, in your branding and marketing. So it's really important. I agree with what Gina's saying. Just it's it's important to 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 keep paying attention and to to keep changing and evolving as your expectations and and needs change. Excellent. And uh, I I I really like you know the idea of the focus and putting putting your time into knowing what you know. You a couple of you said know what you're doing before you do it, right? I mean, that's kind of what we're saying is that we need to have not just meander. And I think a thing about this panel is that we're saying, this is not something you should be doing on accident. This is definitely something you should have a plan with and be moving in a definite direction. Uh, Topher, do you have anything to say or about this or any little insights that you want to give on this? Um, 
well, I'll, I'd like to just point one thing out I really liked about June is she said that, you know, branding is the gateway. And I hadn't heard of that that way before, but that's very true. Um, I, it was it was actually kind of, it's like, no, no, it's sort of the way that you could measure against, do I want to do this? Do I want to take the client on? Or even for storytellers, is this the sort of story, does this fit with this kind of story I want to tell? Does it fit with what I want to do? Does it fit with what I want to read? Does it fit with what, what I want to communicate? So I think it's a sort of a, the sort of um, having branding as kind of a litmus test to really get kind of go yes, no, is actually really nice bit, bit of information that she was talking about. I thought that was really good. Um, other people have talked about uh, a lot about branding. So I'll do professionalism. Um, professionalism is a lot of it is just being honest and communication. And I know I hammer this. I know that I said that in my other, uh, the last time I spoke, but communication as one that's had to do a lot of the management end of stuff. Um, and, and Gene will probably might know about say, agree with me on this. I would say 90% of the problems I have to fix that other people made, not ones that I screw up on, but the ones that other people make is a, because there wasn't some form of communication because something wasn't said when it was supposed to be said at some point, um, I, you should have gotten it earlier or wasn't said at all. Anyways, 90% of, of, of what goes bad is because someone didn't say something oh, to someone else when they were supposed to, and then that goes off. So um, communication can be vital, and it's, not even, and it's especially when it can complicate your life. So a very, very quick kind of quick story. When um, with Rena and Sean's help, I was putting together a pilot several years ago, and we had this actress that, we, that, that I still – still think she's great she's awesome and part of why i will think she's awesome till the day i die is because she did one a lot but this one thing she did really impressed me and I, um we were getting ready to shoot and we're getting ready to shoot and it's still we're in the writing stage it's about four months off and so she says i gotta talk with you so she does a call and she wants to make sure it's a video call so this was this is before everyone was doing this like something important what's up and so she, she, why do you talk with me? So she gets on and she goes, she gets on and she goes, you can't tell anyone else this, but I'm pregnant. I just found out. And she goes, um, and she goes, and, and, and it, when I say communication, it was like the order she told people was like, she told her husband, she told her extended family, and then she told the producer of the show that she's going to be in, which was me. And she said, you're going to, he goes, if you need to recast, you need to do this. I understand. I'm no way was I going to do that. She was phenomenal and perfect for the role. Uh, and she, then she goes, okay, well, you need to know this. I'm like, yes, I do. We need to start figuring out how to, how to work with this now as we go forward. And um, she, and, and, and she was like, don't tell anyone. My extended family don't even know this. So she knew enough of the pipeline of production and how much late information can mess things up that she let me know before she let extended family know because I needed to be able to accommodate this rather big surprise. And it worked out in the end. A lot of it is because she was great. A lot of it is because of the crew, but a lot of it is because she let me know early enough that I could work around this. And that kind of professionalism to go, oh crap, the person down the down the line or above me or around me needs to know this because this is going to be an issue um was is critical and it would help and like i i putting everything together was enough work and it would have and if i had found that out like three weeks before filming it just would have just been utterly insane but she, i knew like two or three months ahead of time so i was able to do that and she knew how important that was going to be so she let me know and that was ultra professional on her end, ultra professional. And it came down to communication and it came down to knowing I, she needed to pass the information along, even if it was just something that she just told one person and um, communication on professionalism is, is really important. If you can communicate and let people know things, especially if it's an upcoming problem, double, especially if it's an upcoming problem the people, the managers and the people around you that you would have to then clean up that mess later will think so much better of you in two years, five years, six years um, down the line. Um, just 
communicate the good and especially the bad communicate the good and especially the bad as you see it when you can get it off to someone else and that's all that's a they will think you're so professional if you can just do that there's more there's more to it uh that i think uh, should be mentioned and that is that uh if you are working in an environment where you are dealing with a lot of information and if you're working in media that's always true it's important to put redundant communication in your daily pipeline uh, if you if you have a shot for example and it has to have these certain props show up at a certain time and the lighting has to be a certain way uh, and you're you're you need certain people to show up at a certain time, tell them in writing, tell them in a phone call, get them on Facebook and tell them that way, uh, post it on your uh, production wiki if you have a production wiki, uh, post, post it in your um, uh, uh, Post it in your uh, asset manager if you're using asset management software, you know, write notes in it. But at least two different redundant methods of um, getting the information across, preferably three, because chances are good somebody is going to miss one of them. If you rely on a single method of communication, you are risking information being lost and you'll miss a deadline or you'll miss a shot or something will be screwed up because information didn't get where it needed to go when it needed to get there. Uh, I was, uh, I worked at Rhythm and Hughes uh, animation studios for about 10 years. And uh, I was the information, the studio's information architect there. And that's what we did. We figured out ways of getting that information from one place to another. Uh, everybody who was affected by a piece of information, received it, either upstream or downstream. And as a result, in 24 years uh, of the studio's history, they never lost a shot. They never had to drop one because they couldn't finish it. And nothing ever broke. Well, sometimes they broke, but it, it was never the fault of the communication. It was because they were trying something ambitious. But the point being that if you build this into your production pipeline, if you, you know, you don't have to remember to communicate. You just have to build the routine that everybody follows so that everybody knows how to communicate with each other in the production and everything will go much more smoothly. The other facet of this is the difference in speaking to professionalism again. The other facet of this is that a professional knows the difference between critique of their work and a personal attack. Those who can't separate the two don't get past the next paycheck very frequently or they don't get hired onto the next job. A true professional knows that difference and leaves their ego in the bucket by the door where they can pick it up on their way out. All right. The, uh, speaking of software and methods of communication and tools that we can use for that, Sean, do you have a little something you'd like to say about some of the tools that people should be using for those communication pipelines and uh, getting their brand out? Yeah, so once again, sorry about me not being on video, but I don't think you need to see me anyway. But I'm going to transition over to, to um, a couple websites that we have here. But what I really want to talk about, and it goes along with the software here, and it's something that Rena touched on. And we're in a world right now where everything's changing very quickly, mostly online. So, you know, let's say you're an artist or a writer or an illustrator or a letter <laughs> or a videographer, an audio person you know, what do you do right now? Where do you find work and all those things? And before those questions can be answered, you really need to do an inventory of your digital life. You need to sit down and I just did this recently and it's what Rena was talking about a little earlier, you know, redoing her website, 
pulling together all the things. Uh, I know she worked on like pulling all her copyrights together and who owned what and what organizations she was part of. And I think it really puts into perspective for anyone who's a creative, how much work they've already done and how to leverage that work to continue, you know, to continue finding work. And so really sitting down and even if it's on a piece of paper, but you know, an Excel file or a Google spreadsheet is awesome for this is sit down and say, do I own a website? You might own multiple websites, URLs, and you might have multiple servers, or you might be using other things like Wix, uh, which is a web builder, or, you know, you might still have a, well, I don't think GeoCities is around anymore, but, you know, really sitting down and inventorying everything that you have that can help you in the future. You may not use it all, uh, but just figuring out, do you have a Twitter account for your brand or your personal brand, or is it a personal one? Um, you know, your Facebook account, do you have Facebook groups and really sitting down and saying, okay, what can I call from this and get rid of, you know, maybe it's time to shut things down and to consolidate into one area. And, um, I did that. I sat down, I have a massive portfolio that goes back 20 some odd years and lots of comic books I've never posted on my site. And what I have up here and I know, sorry, I'm talking and not showing, but, um, I have Behanced up. And so Behance is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud. It is free. So if you create an account, you get Behance for free. And it is a portfolio site. Um, it gives you pretty much everything a normal website would have. Um, you can see what I'm showing here. And I'm sorry, the rest of the group isn't seeing this. So everyone in the, out in the internet sees this. Um, yeah, it's, isn't it awesome? So... Uh, <laughs> But we have, um, you know, with Behance, it's quick, it's easy, it's free. But I've gone through and pulled everything that, uh, like, I was just in Forbes. Sorry, it's my, my, my little self-promo here. But uh, with all the education stuff going on, I've been quoted. So I pull those articles. I pull the logos. I put it together as a post in my Behance portfolio. Uh, we have videos that we've done with June in the past with our clients. All of those go on there as well. And so they all kind of come together and um, Behance is a great place to put it all in one place. The other thing that, that we run into as well is um, making sure that we have all of your, you know, I'll call it the resume, having your resume together um, and just everything that you've done. You may not use it, but it's all in one place. And so where I'm getting at with this is I can keep going and going and going with different uh, examples, but it's pulling together all those little pieces that you need to build your brand. It's your inventory of your digital life and then making the decisions on how you'll use them. Probably the number one and where I'm going to tell you to start is LinkedIn. And I can't stop talking about it because it is a massive part of my life. So I have my LinkedIn profile up here and I use my Behance with my LinkedIn, with my features, uh, with my portfolio, and I have I post here all the time as well, and so it's a big part of my just my everyday life. I'm in here every day. People message me. People find me in here as well. It's one of my major marketing tools, not just for my creative side, but my professional education side and everything else that I do. I mix all my stuff as well. Uh, it's kind of too late in my world to try to separate my personal and my professional life. The two kind of go hand in hand. And um, I've said this before at a lot of our panels, you know, you got to make that decision. And that's where this inventory comes into play is there may be, you may have a Twitter account, a Facebook account, a TikTok account, whatever it may be, social media, but it's your personal account. Are you going to have to create all new ones for your business as well? Um, some of the other things too, um, you know, I, with Baya Group, I was, I pulled this up a little earlier when, when June was talking, but this is the site right now too, just going through it. Um, it's very targeted towards um, that industry, but it could be used in a lot of different ways as well. Uh, the creative stuff's in here too. So it's really looking at what you, what you have, taking inventory, getting all your digital stuff together. And that's another side of it too, is if you are a creative, you got to scan everything. You got to take photos of everything. You got to organize all your stuff because then you have no content to put in these things either. So at the same time that you're cleaning up your online life, you're also probably cleaning up your analog life too. You know, if you're a painter, are you taking pictures of all your paintings? Are you tweeting them? Are you putting them on Facebook? Are you using Instagram? Um, I know Gene, I think brought that up a little bit earlier. Um, but you know, being narrow with what you're working with, this helps you with that. 
then you have a mission. You know what your game plan is because you've organized all of your stuff. And I know that's difficult for a lot of people, especially a lot of creatives. They like chaos because they thrive in it to paint or to draw or to write or whatever it may be. But this is almost, it's being professional. It's being businesslike about this because in the end, you know, we still have to pay our bills. And if you want to do it as a creative, you need to be organized on that end of it. Uh, one last thing I'm going to throw in here too, and this is on the professional side, is just following up with people. Um, and on our other panel, we talk a lot about business cards and networking and everything else. But one of the things I brought up here was Evernote. Um, every time you get a business card, scan it, follow up with that person. Because even if they don't do something with you right away, it may be a year from now they follow up with you. Or they be, you know, Evernote, when you scan a business card, it OCRs it, it sends them an email with all of your information in it and a picture of you. And it also links you on LinkedIn. It sends that request out. It'll pull up all their other social media. And so, you know, I become a stalker very quickly with everyone. But from a business standpoint, it's a good way just to get back to everyone that you've met, uh, be it at a convention, be it at a business meeting, be it just, you know, if you're at Starbucks and you ran into someone and you exchange cards. Evernote's a great piece of software for that as well. And I am going to jump back here. Sorry. <laughs> And I will pass it back to Ron and go from there. Okay, hey, Ron. Hey, Sean. Can I um, can I follow up really quickly on one thing you said? There, there's sure. so much you said that's good, but like you said, when they will follow, they, when they will come back for you later, that can that happen. That's really important, you know, because yeah, you get it out there. They know who you are. I did some. I, I ended up not taking off, but. I was approached for some illustration work last year by a guy that, but last time I worked with him was so long ago that I was an illustrator. And I have now since gone to do what I'm doing now. So his, yeah, I don't generally do anymore, but if you want to, that's great. So this guy came so long that I'm really doing straight illustration anymore. That's how long it was. And he still had the card. He kept it and he, and he, and he came back. Um, so they, they can, if you do it right, like with what Sean's talking about, you really don't think about how long it can be before somebody will pick up the phone. Go, oh yeah, I need a, day. and then they will call you on that. It, 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 it is an, it's a, it's, it's something to put in and something to do with John's saying, but it could get you work in five, 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 six years later, easily, um, easily to be able. Uh, yeah. If you follow through, I mean, I'm sure we all have stories of times that, you know, I, I have that story with Kevin Easton, where I was on the panel with him and I gave him the car, and now co the spend thirty seconds. That is that actually applicable here? So spend, and you well, haven't had your story yet. So, well, so I mean, I was, and this is sort of branding as well. I, I wear a lot of geeky T-shirts, and when I was a grad student, or when I was a grad student at Scripps Research Institute, uh, someone from the Fleet Science Center was looking for someone to be a scientist on a panel with. It's called crossing over where science and comics meet. and so Kevin Easton who created the Ninja Turtles and Chris Moore who's the writer for Godzilla and uh, me and uh, Tom Waltz who writes all the Ninja Turtles now and uh, I, I went and I brought cards that said I was a scientist and a writer and I gave everyone my car our cards and about a week later Kevin Eastman writes me and says hey we had, uh, that project hasn't finished yet but it was it's been a blast to hang out and from there, I've been on other panels and been on panels with so many interesting people. But it's because I had that geeky T-shirt thing to start with, and then I followed up with cards. And then I was, you know, I'm now doing a lot of uh, advising on science for books. It's kind of weird. A couple people who come to me who are like, "Hey, how could an evil scientist do this?" And so I get to be an evil scientist and you know make something up. But uh. We're about at the point in the panel, I think, where someone would be standing in the back with a card saying a few minutes left. Uh, we've, all, we've all seen those cards a bunch of times. And uh, I don't think we could, before we go, I, I don't think it'd be right to 
have this online WonderCon thing without talking about a, a little bit about how this 2020 everything being messed up where you can't see people anymore or do anything, how is that affecting the way that you go out and get jobs, you go out and try and meet people or get contacts? I mean, obviously, the you know, the world's turned upside down for right now. And part of what people, the new professionalism and the, the new branding, it's going to have to be based on responses to this. So um, in the last couple of minutes, I was wondering if everyone would give like a one minute idea or a bump, just something. I mean, if any, um, Gene, I mean, sure. you all are, June, you've already worked from home. Uh, so yeah. why don't we start with you? Why don't we start with June and then we'll, uh, we'll have everyone answer it real quick. Okay. Yeah. I'm, my answer is going to be really short because uh, Krypton Radio is the day job. Uh, I, the, the, the parent company is Krypton Media Group. And, uh, and we're just starting up our publishing arm. And I, I don't look for work. Work kind of looks for me. <laughs> so I don't have much to offer there. All um, right. Uh, how about June now? So I have an example of something. So when I did the introduction, I, I have been working at home. So when this happened, it wasn't a big pivot for uh, the my co my coworkers and me, but we are working with school districts, and so they were in a whole different place than we were. And one of the things that we offered was to help young people really figure out well how could they work from home. And we've been doing this internship program with a school district in Los Angeles County for uh, this is a fifth year, and so we recently made an experience that we turned uh, it was normally in person where they would do a mock interview, have industry employers uh, look at students' resumes and cover letters. And we pivoted uh, to an online version. We did it all on Zoom. We had 193 students who worked, uh, and we, I mean, we used a lot of technology. We used uh, Trello. We used Calendly to schedule the, the professionals so that they had a spot. And, and then we were able to just have, uh, we did, three full days and we had uh, 36 sessions. We had all these students there and we were able to really demonstrate to the school districts that we could pivot, that we could do something. And so now we're in the middle of planning some, we're planning a paid work experience for students that's gonna happen in the summer. And it's gonna be talking about teaching these skills so that when they are looking for jobs in the future, they will have some, some background on how to do this because chances are we're not quote unquote going back, right? So work as we yeah. know it has probably not gonna be the same. There's probably gonna be more companies allowing people to be working from their homes. So, so that's one way is really embrace the technology, learn Zoom, learn the different platforms for how to communicate as Rena was talking about, you know, share your screens, learn some of the different uh, tools that are out there. So I would say stay up on the technology, have fun with it, practice and yeah, together, you know, let's just figure out how to keep connecting. So this pivot with WonderCon is pretty awesome for us to do. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Rena, do, do you wanna give a little something, a little thought on what, how all this madness is going with you or what, any so, advice yeah. or tips? Sure, so uh, there's so much I could say, but for one minute, <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see, I mean, I. I've been really proactive on social media. So I learned TikTok from my kids who are now <laughs> living here, who were not living here before this. <laughs> so I've done things like fly on brooms on a Harry, with Harry Potter music and things on TikTok. Um, I've been very proactive on finding article, research articles in, in EdTech and sharing them on LinkedIn. Um, so I move stuff between Twitter and LinkedIn. I've been posting a lot on Facebook. I've been posting my music on YouTube, um, but and then proactively texting, sending things, um, and calls. All of that is very intentional because um, I don't have a lot of free time. I've been teaching and working full time on top of that. So, but to keep in touch with people, keep your you know, them knowing that you're there. And, you know, I'm a person who has a lot of contacts as well and delivers, always tries to deliver 
something that people really like, but you know, if you're not in front of people, they're going to forget about you. So I use all of those things in order to stay in front of people. Awesome. Yeah. Um, th those are all great tools. I, I think I've got to go get TikTok now and see you flying around on the broom. That sounds You have to. Super. I'm also <laughs> skateboarding in awesome. my Batman cowl that Topher gave me in a costume in my neighborhood who ran out of their houses with their cameras and I freaked them out. It was awesome. <laughs> awesome. That's amazing. Um, Topher, do you have a, a, a quick thing to say about 2020 and the world um, that we've stepped into? Uh, I'm going to do a different application of this, but I'm going to start with the same thing I said I said before. Uh, Event-wise, 2020 is canceled. Um, if everything, if magically the coronavirus disappeared tonight, we would still have nothing. Too much has been canceled at this point. Um, events, concerts, tours that that we would people are going to be looking for what to do. Um, and they're and with nowhere to go, they're going to be looking online for it. So your online branding is probably going to be more important this year as people are bored and looking around than probably the next 10 years combined. Um, they're go your online branding. If you can get something out there, if you like no. Uh, their time and it's not just at problems that he's having at this point because there's so much internet usage much more than the system is so fine branding for defining who you are is this year they're going to be looking at that more they look at that a lot anyways that's kind of just the way they look but they're going to look at that more this year than probably for the next 10 years they're not going to be looking as much as this year. It's going to be huge amount of, um, it's probably going to be the only opportunity and the only, um, only opportunity out of all this madness is that if you understand that people are looking online, you can then use that um, to really kind of get a, a, to get yourself out there because people are looking for stuff to do. And even, even once every, even once the general stuff opens up, they're not going to be able to go to concerts. They're not going to be able to do a lot of different things that they're just going to be trying to find stuff to keep them bored because at a certain point, they can't watch any more Netflix. So they're going to be looking for other ways to entertain themselves. And you could be that if you under, if you understand your brand and you adequately get it out there this year. All right. Um, I think after this, you know, in the next, minute sean's going to put up a card that's going to have everyone's contact information and where to contact each of us and if you have any follow-up questions after watching this and want to reach out i think all of our information is going to be there is that correct sean yeah we'll be we'll be posting that in the youtube stuff so yeah we'll we'll get that out to everybody okay with that i think we're about out of time um so I, I think we should just finish it by saying, everyone stay safe, wash your hands. <laughs> That's very <laughs> important. And if you have friends or, or loved ones who you know are isolated, and you should reach out and make sure they're okay and stay interconnected with the people that you love and that are in, the, in this world with you. So I think that's it. Uh, thanks for coming to our panel, our virtual panel. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everybody.